Hey, can you pour lead in the 3D printed molds? No, not really. But today we're gonna walk through how you would take a 3D printed mold master and turn it into a silicone mold to pour lead heads. Let's check it out, bro. So I'm not gonna go into modeling a jig, really. There's a previous video I have that's all about putting hooks into Fusion 360 and how you model that. And of course I have a whole giant playlist on designing lures and really jigs are not that much different. But there is one thing that I wanna show you that is super duper helpful. So this is a really stupid jig head I'm making. Um, I, I got these eyes off of Timu that are gigantically large. I think they're like 21 millimeter glass doll eyes. And I wanna make a jig um, head for them uh, specifically for snapper. How do you determine inside of Fusion 360 how heavy your jig is going to be? And it's pretty darn simple. So here is my snapper jig head. Right after I cut out the eyes, I don't have any of the other hardware in here yet. I don't have the hook in here. I don't have the eyelet uh, that I'm going to put on top. You can weigh those separately. In my experience, you know, they're not going to add a ton of weight to your jig and unless you're like just I don't know crazy that you know you need exactly five ounces or whatever you're going for then you can weigh those and just add it to this total but what we want to do is right click and go to physical material it's going to bring up this box over here and yeah the fusion 360 material library we're going to go to metal double, single click sorry now there's a bunch of different, um, these are lead alloys here. I just end up usually just using the straight lead one. So scroll down, it's in alphabetical order. Lead, and you wanna drag it up here. And it's right there, and then you drag it over to your object, boom, and it assigns it. The other thing you can do is uh, right click and, oh no, sorry. Yeah, right click and add to favorites. It's already in my favorites. Um, that kind of keeps things down um, searching if you just go to favorites and then it's right there. Let me assign lead to it. If I right click on it again and go to properties, I now have this mass which is equal to weight. So this is 150.727 grams, which is, you know, roughly five ounces. Good enough for me, right? It's like, I think it's like five point two or something 5.3 a little heavier like i'm not too worried about it okay but if you were worried about it you know you could adjust the size that's really all you have um control of i'm going to model this in real time for you guys um you know it's pretty straightforward um, i added a a little nub here because i'm going to actually um i wouldn't call it fly tying i'm going to i'm going to tie some jig material on there to uh, make it happy. This is my hook coming out. I added this box here so the, the hook, the hooked part of the hook has some place to stay in this mold. I brought in my eye. I use these brass eyes for this from another project, popped it in there, and now we're good to go. And then I put a little, this cap piece in here to uh, keep the lead from flowing up into this part here. So that's basically the jig, uh, at least from the mold standpoint. Then I'm going to draw the mold box. So a couple of things to note here, um, you know, I'm drawing it. There's an inside and an outside. So this is the inside portion where the silicone is going to go. And then I have my wall. Uh, I use an offset up here. So the offset button up here. Once I draw my, uh, my inside kind of cavity, if you will, I'll do an offset. This controls the wall thickness. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. Really doesn't uh, matter too much. Um, three millimeters works well for me. And you'll also notice I have these holes in here that are 5.1. I'm using M5 steel dowels that I'm gonna put in to this before I pour to give me my alignment holes. And I'm gonna use those same dowels for pins. I don't model pins and holes um, in Fusion 360, specifically for 3D printing because it, it makes it a nightmare to print with these pins sticking out. 
you have all of these um, supports you have to put in there and it really just, it's, it's a nightmare. Just don't do it. So I'm using M5 pens to make them fit easily. I do them 5.1 millimeters wide um, and that is that. Dog's going crazy. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to split this guy here. Just split it right down the middle on the, the plane so that we get half of it. Then we come in and we extrude the inside portion of my mold cavity and I go back again I choose three millimeters because it works best too thin where things warp but thick enough to where you know not too thick where you're just wasting resin basically so I go backwards there down about three millimeters I do join I come in here and now I extrude this part here again back three millimeters should have done in this particular case is uh, extruded both of these profiles. I wouldn't have needed to do it twice, but you know, whatever. Then the important part is this extrude, which we come in and we extrude that outer profile for the walls. And you wanna make sure you give yourself um, a decent amount of material. This is the, the thickness of the mold half. And what I found with, um, you know, lead, I'm not any expert on lead pouring, but the thicker you make this, the kind of better, um, the results of the mold will be and the easier it is to handle. If you make this really thin when you're, um, you know, clamping it down or holding it, it has a tendency to warp a ton and move around. So, you know, make this pretty thick. Don't skimp out. And you want to join it up. And now you have our box half. Some fillets in here on these corners to make things nice. We're going to add some chamfers and some more fillets just to get everything kind of nice and smooth on the outside of the box okay these chamfers will come in handy in a little bit you'll see so now what we want to do is we're going to draw another sketch that has the vents so i'm venting here so let me back up to why i chose these particular locations this is going to be my pour spout right here because i don't want to pour over this eyelet obviously uh, I don't want to come in from the front because it just makes things back here a little wonky. So I'm going to pour from basically what ends up being the bottom of the jig. So this is going to be my pour spout where the lead's going to go in. I'm going to have two vent holes here and a vent hole here because this is another high point that could easily trap air. Venting for lead, at least in my experience, is a lot simpler than, you know, an injection mold. Uh, for plastic baits. I'm just going to pipe these and I'm going to use a normal pipe command because I'm lazy. You could go into forms and pipe them forms, but you can see here we have our vents and our pour spout. Again, size is totally up to you. Um, for these guys, I'm at 0.8 millimeters and for the pour spout, I think, you know, this is going to somewhat depend on the size of your jig, obviously, but on this one, I'm at four millimeters. Then I come in here and I draw my circle for the actual, uh, we're making a big kind of pore area that goes into the spout here. So again, I'm just gonna use, um, I drew a sketch right on this surface right here. Just do a circle, pull that out. Um, again, size is totally up to you, man. Like whatever you wanna make it, um, big, small, whatever. And then I extrude it out and you get this funky face on the back. Don't worry about that. We'll clean all that up later. So then we're going to come in and we're going to fill it. This inside section here, make it nice and smooth. So things flow correctly. Then this split here, what I do is I split this whole body by this bottom face, obviously, because we want to get rid of all of this junk down here. Um, you know, you could be, um, super specific with uh, the sketches we do earlier for these vents and stop them, you know, uh, before they penetrated through the surface. But, you know, I usually just do the split and it's fine. Then we're good. Then I remove all of those bodies, which are all those extra bodies that were left over. Um, if we go back here before we do that, you'll see I got all these these guys here. These are all the little parts that were left over. So we get rid of those. Again, it's more of housekeeping than anything. Then we got this little funky part on the back. We're just going to uh, delete that. And to do that, you just click on that, hit the delete button and boom, it's gone. 
Fusion's smart enough to understand what's going on here most of the time. If you have some funky geometry over here, um, you could run into problems. And again, I'd probably just use these surfaces to split it off and delete it. All right, so now we have one half of our mold cavity all set. Now we just mirror that and we have the other half. It's that simple. You know, obviously you don't want to join it. You want to do a new body. And there you go. Now you have two halves of the mold body. Let's go print. Oh, remember when I said those fillets that we put on the mold will come in handy? This is where they come in handy. So do flatten by face and choose one of these corner faces. And that's going to put it at pretty much a perfect 45 degree angle for printing. Rotate them around so they fit on the bill plate. And when you go to support them, which you probably need to do unless you made like a really, really big thick wall, you'll need to add some supports here. Uh, make sure that the support lift height is zero because that'll keep that face stuck to the bottom. Um, we're going to use that for extra supports. And I just use auto supports for this. Um, these support settings are from another resin I've been using uh, that I'll be doing a video on soon. It's, it's a really cool resin for lure bodies. Um, and then just hit print, bro, and this is what happens. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.